So I've made a lot of meads, but today's going to be the weirdest one yet. Corn, mango, and habanero, or pepper. Let's get started. So this video, this mead is for the Great Mead Project, which is a giant collaborative effort between myself and pretty much all the other awesome uh, mead YouTubers that you see around on the internet. There are a total of about 10 of us, and we're all using the same, um, at least ingredient-ish list. We all have to use corn in some facet, mango in some facet, and of course, pepper. So uh, my recipe that I'm gonna be doing this is gonna be a little bit different. I'm doing it in my own way, which is, if you watch this channel, is where I kind of goof around a little bit. We are gonna be using 25 ounces of mango wine base. This can, uh, well, it's enough for one gallon. It'll really give us the mango flavor that we want. Uh, you could, I explored other mango options. I'm gonna go with this one. This has sugar in it, by the way, this mango. So we're gonna have to deal with that. Um, then my pepper introduction will be using one of these dried habanero peppers that I got from my friend doing the most. Been holding on to these for a while. We're just gonna cut it open in the secondary and put it in, let it sit. We're gonna use this super high, oh, well, excuse me, we're gonna use a sake yeast. This is a different container um, for this. I think sake yeast will yield a very interesting result. And this is second gen used, so Hopefully it still does, does fine. And um, the corn is gonna be the weirdest element. I'm actually gonna take and get, uh, I don't know how much, um, ke well, I'm using kettle corn. So I'm literally gonna pop kettle corn and then kind of dry hop with it in the secondary. I don't know how much I'll have to use, kind of why I'm using a bucket so that when I, uh, when I do my dry hopping, I can make sure it all sinks to the bottom and have to use a lot. I'll pro probably put it in a bag. Anyways, this is a very interesting concept. I explored lots of ways to um, use the corn, including a germination method where you literally, uh, you get the kernels, like dry kernels, moist enough to where they germinate, which changes the inside, and then you can go through a process of making them into a mash. I just decided to do my own silly thing and use popcorn. So we're gonna go ahead and start mixing some stuff up. We're gonna get our, or got some water in here. Uh, well, I'm gonna get, going to get some water in here. Um, my 25 ounces of this wine mango base, my honey, mix it all together. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. All right, I mixed everything in. Starting gravity, 1.086. Um, I don't think I need to mention this, but everything has been sanitized. So we are now, uh, we just pitched our yeast too. We are now gonna take and put our gallon, our lid on this. This is a two gallon fermenter, leaving space up top for fermentation in future endeavors. I'm gonna put this in here and we are gonna let it start fermenting. I'll write down all the information about it. When we come out of the primary, we're gonna take our gravity readings, do all of those things. Uh, we will then add our pepper. So we'll cut it in half pitch it right in basically, and then let it set for, I don't know, probably four to six days, depending on how fast it accumulates heat. And then we will pop our popcorn after we pull the, the pepper out and dry hop it in a bag. Never done that before, big experiment. We're gonna see if it works. All right, it's been a grand total of 19 days since we started the primary. We started at 1.086. We are currently at 1.000. So, what does it taste like out of the primary? We haven't added the pepper, nor our popcorn. So let's get a taste test. Ooh, it's got a little, definitely a little bite, a little yeastiness to it. The mango flavor kind of character is actually very nice. I'm making, um, using that same juice, a, a big, just straight up mango mead. It has that same idea to me. It's pretty juicy. Um, kind of washes down pretty fast. The body's not very big, but that's okay. It's not bad, it needs it needs some time. The uh, the heat is definitely gonna hit me pretty good on this one. That's why it really needs to come down. Uh, it also needs some sweetness, but we're gonna wait to, to back sweeten later, till later. We're gonna go ahead now and take and move it out of this container into this 1.4 gallon fermenter. So I'm gonna, do, I'm gonna do that real fast. 
All right, so move this over. Now here's kind of my predicament. Well, I, I moved into this glass container because I, I wanted to, <laughs> and um, I didn't want it to sit in plastic. I'm about to leave town for about 10 days, and I don't want to do my popcorning yet. Fun word, popcorning. So it's gonna sit in here for the next two weeks ish. Then we'll come back. We will do our dry hopping with our popcorn. You'll see in a second. And then the last thing we'll do, last two things we'll do, we'll do will be um, adding the pepper for X amount of time and back sweetening. So I'll be back in a bit. All right. So this mango big crazy thing has cleared up some since we last did anything. I'm gonna go ahead and actually take and move it out of this into a bucket real fast and then move it back in. I'm just trying to get off of gross sediment because that gets in the way of what we wanna do. And I'll talk about my next step in a moment. Okay, so here's what I did. I took a dried pepper and cut it in half and put it into here. And I'll get a little close up for you to show you what I'm talking about. But basically this thing is in a hop cage. Now this hop cage will of course just sit in there and sink to the bottom and help this impart flavor. When I'm ready to pull it out, I can, I can literally grab it by the string and pull it out of the brew. I don't know how long this will sit in here in the brew, but we'll find out. It will definitely add pepper, pepper flavor for sure. Okay, here we go. We're gonna go ahead and introduce our hop cage pepper in. Lo or floats to the bottom, sinks to the bottom, put our lid back on. Here's the deal, I have to taste test this. Bummer, every uh, little bit to see how the pepper's imparting flavor. Some peppers will impart flavor quickly, some will take a while. So make sure that anytime you add a pepper or a heavy spice or something that will be strong that you taste test regularly. I'm gonna do that. Our last step will actually be the popcorn and that will be talked about here in a second. So I'll be back soon. All right, this pepper has been in for five days and I've taste tested along the way because I wanted to make sure it wasn't getting too hot or whatever. Let me tell you what it tastes like now. Oh yeah, the pepper is super roasty. In some ways it's starting to overwhelm the roastiness of the peppers, overwhelming the beginning of the mango. The mango is still there, but it's a little bit uh, hidden, so to speak. I think it will, with some sweetness, this will help out. It's very roasty, not really hot. It's not like the type of pepper heat that like is scolding your, your skull. It's just kind of like, subtle i think this this point for this pepper is great it's there but it's not the most predominant flavor which is what we want i'm gonna attempt to fish out the hop cage real fast Whew. all right that was quite the event so peppers in here but this was perfect because i just literally was able to pull this cage out and now i can put it to the side somewhere in a second let me do that all right, so here's the next plan. This, the nice thing about that is I didn't have to rack it all. It's just there. We have to lastly add two things really. The popcorn, which I had discussed earlier, that the popcorn should be a, an interesting take on corn. Um, I know lots of other people who are doing this project are doing different varieties of corn. Uh, this is gonna be popcorn. Now I wanna use kettle corn, but here's my complication. If you use popcorn, I can't just, uh, go and get a microwave bag of popcorn because there's oil in it and that oil will not mix well with this So what I'm gonna have to do is come up with a creative way to make kettle corn maybe by buying actual corn uh, kernels and Omit all oil. So basically I need regular kern <laughs> regular corn kernels. I can't say that for some reason and then um, Leave them as is pop them in something like a air fryer or possibly even uh, those little, uh, whatever they are, my, uh, popcorn poppers. And uh, I don't really know if that'll work, but we're gonna find out. I think kettle corn would be an interesting flavor to go here. I don't know how much popcorn yet, but I'm gonna come back when I have a better plan. All right, so here's what I've done. I wanted to add popcorn, as I talked about. So I literally took and I took unbuttered, unseasoned popcorn that I bought and I popped it in a pot, essentially, on the stove. I didn't put any oil, because again, oil would have been a bad mixture for this. I wanted to do kettle corn, but I couldn't find an alternative. So I used regular popcorn, popped about, 
I don't know, a quarter cup, possibly. Uh, and then I took that popped popcorn, put it into a brew bag. I put this brew bag in about six days ago with the popcorn in it, and it's been sitting. And I wanna tell you what this tastes like after a few days dry hopping with popcorn. Ooh. Yeah, that heat is really starting to get more pronounced. The interesting thing here, the popcorn's not, the corn taste is not on the, the front. It is on the very, very end of the palate. It literally tastes like the aftertaste of popcorn. Even get some on the nose. Oh, it's, it's trippy. But it has the aftertaste of popcorn. Very odd. You still get a little bit of mango, the essence of it, but it's not sweet. The, the pepper is like being more, coming, becoming more pronounced. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna remove this popcorn bag we're gonna stabilize this, and I'm gonna come back 24 hours, and we're gonna go ahead and um, back sweep. All right, so I've stabilized with potassium sorbate and potassium metabisulfite. They halt yeast fermentation. Um, you don't have to do it with these. You could do it with whatever you want, but this is what I'm choosing. So we're gonna go ahead and stick the lid back on uh, and wait about 24 hours, then we'll back sweeten. And we gotta just use regular clover honey to back sweeten, so I'll be doing that. So let's go ahead and jump in the future and see if we can pronounce the mango flavor more. All right, so I have added, again, stabilized it previously, added 9.9 .9 pounds, a little shy of a pound of clover honey that was heated up. Now the trick here is I heated this honey up so that it mixed in easier, um, worked well. Here's what it tastes like now. There's a lot of fruitiness of uh, that mango is there. The sweetness has now tempered down the heat from the pepper, but it's still there. It's just not as punchy in the face. And the, the corn is still that aftertaste. It's not like a corn forward brew, but I kind of like that. I think it's unique. So it's not bad. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put my lid back on. I'll tell you my uh, gravities here in a second, but I'm gonna put my lid on and uh, we're gonna let this set and hopefully clear up some. We might need to cold crash it, we'll find out. So our starting gravity was 1.086. After the primary, it was like roughly 1.006-ish. And then now our gravity after back sweetening is 1.025. So we have back sweetened a little bit, um, which is helpful for, again, bringing out the sweetness from the mango and helping to temper down the heat from the pepper, <coughs> as that gets me. Ooh. I'm gonna put this away. Let's see if it clears back up, because I've definitely made it murky again. All right, we're back. It's been about three weeks. We let it set, it cleared up, it kind of returned back to where it was previously, and as far as clarity is concerned, a little layer of sediment at the bottom, um, but that was okay. We have a taste test of it here, of course. Oh yeah, the popcorn, it's super interesting because it, uh, it gives a I mean, true popcorn feel. And when you think you can eat popcorn, it's way on the back of the palate. The heat is tempered down quite a bit because of the sweetness now. And that sweetness has also brought out the mango character. This thing's really, really good. I've already bottled it, which I used a bottling wand, auto siphon, all of those things, put it into each bottle. Um, I'm calling this thing the Spicy Bee Move Mead. Uh, a play on the word movie, and it's mango, habanero, popcorn. Um, in total, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, eleven bottles. One of them being a wine bottle, 750 wine bottle, and um, I am super, super pleased with this one. I think you should go and make it. Now, here's the real fun part about this. This video was a little bit of a collaborative effort because. Myself and every other one of the big mead making channels and important mead making channels on YouTube have joined together to do this great mead project. So you can go check out all of these people. I'll list them right here. These are literally every single one of the mead making channels on YouTube. And they have come together, we have come together to make this mead. We all received the same rest, not I'm gonna say recipe, but ingredient list and we all put our own twist on it. So you can go check out all of their videos. Um, 
I will hopefully be linking them all down in the description so you can check each one out. My version it could be completely different from doing the most version or Faywood Mead, uh, you know, or Texas Longhouse Mead. We could all have this very, very different thing and we probably will. So this is my version. I used popcorn, which is weird. Um, I didn't use real mangoes. I used habanero. Who knows what they did? I, I honestly don't know, but we'll find out. So go check out their videos. Go support them because all mead making channels need support. I hope you will join me for a future video. I've had a lot of fun with this project and I challenge you to make this mead or use some popcorn in your mead and see what happens. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the future. Bye.